What happens to sound waves too high to be heard? Why are such sound waves sent through metal? How will ultrasonics help shape our future? Industry on Parade. Peabody Award winner for public service, produced on film each week by the National Association of Manufacturers. A hearing test to determine the range of sounds audible to this woman's ears. She quickly reaches her limit. Human ears can't hear the higher frequencies, like those being transmitted by this whistle. A dog can hear the whistle and comes running. But no animal, on this farm or anywhere, can detect the sounds emitted by the electronic device we're about to see being demonstrated. So high is the frequency of its vibrations that they're called ultrasonic. And though we can't hear them, they're extremely useful, performing such prodigious feats as measuring meat on the hoof. To do this, the silent sound is beamed through the side of the bull. Then by gauging the time it takes for the waves to bounce back from the animal tissue, it's possible to judge the ratio of ferret to lean. Just one of scores of jobs now being done by ultrasonics, a one-time curiosity that has been put to work by American industry. At companies like Galton Industries Incorporated of Metuchen, New Jersey, the manufacture of ultrasonic devices begins with piezoelectric substances, which when struck, will generate electricity. Conversely, when subjected to electricity, they will give off sound waves of very high frequency. Crystals or special ceramics are used, hard substances that are ground to precise dimensions and are electrically charged. It's the charging that makes the materials transducers, that is, converters of energy from one form to another. And it's this conversion from electricity to mechanical vibrations so rapid they can't be heard that makes ultrasonic devices work, whatever their ultimate purpose may be. The variety of devices using ultrasonics is large, and so is the number of jobs they do. But the basic principle is the same for all of them, the utilization of sound waves rated at more than 20,000 cycles per second. Now let's take a closer look at one particular piece of ultrasonic equipment. The complex wiring here being assembled at the Danbury, Connecticut plant of Sperry Products Incorporated will be used in a reflectoscope. This is an instrument finding wide application in the inspection of various materials, an instrument with the ability to detect and precisely locate hidden flaws. Not so long ago, there simply wasn't any such thing as a reflectoscope. Today, it's mass-produced on an assembly line basis. Manufactured in many sizes, depending on the nature of the piece to be inspected, such devices are in general use throughout the aircraft industry, among others. Here at Republic Aviation on New York's Long Island, for example, they permit rapid testing of large metal components for new planes. In this case, the aluminum to be inspected is immersed in a tank of liquid which allows the use of even higher frequencies. Now, a reference block is selected, a metal section containing a hole or notch that will serve as an artificial defect. By comparing the readings obtained from this known quality with his other findings, the operator can interpret their meaning as the moving bridge carries the ultrasonic beam searching unit back and forth. The pattern of movement is designed to cover the entire surface of the submerged metal. At the point where it detects a flaw, the searching unit stops till the spot can be marked with a crayon. Then the search begins again. 
the ultrasonic waves probing through the metal, constantly indicating the quality of its internal structure by the way in which the silent sounds are reflected back to the monitoring unit. To the expert, this means another defect to be noted and marked for correction or elimination, a flaw that will never cause trouble in a finished airplane because it was revealed in plenty of time. From raw material to finished product, with steel as well as with aluminum and other materials, the new inspection methods are equally effective. After a railroad wheel is tested for true roundness, it too is probed by high-frequency sound waves that actually go inside the metal, thoroughly testing its internal structure for defects, trouble the eye can't see, being located by sounds the ear can't hear. But inspection is only one of the many uses for ultrasonics. Another is precision cutting and drilling performed by tools like this Raytheon impact grinder. Its 25,000 vibrations per second are transmitted to the work surface through an abrasive slurry. Thus, intricate work is performed on the hardest substances, though the tool head never even contacts the surface. Here, the device is used to make ceramic electronic components. It's also employed for hard metal die cutting and for such delicate tasks as decorating glass and precious stones. But far and away, the widest commercial use of ultrasonics so far has been in cleaning of industrial parts, tools, and materials to illustrate carbon smeared on glass simply floats away. A wristband is cleaned just as quickly, the oil and dirt being shaken free by high-frequency vibrations passing through a bath of water to which a mild detergent has been added. While factories and machine shops were the first to make extensive use of this type of cleaning, the technique soon was adopted by hospitals, and appliance manufacturers were quick to see its promise going to work to develop a dishwashing application. Even the grease and tiny cuttings packed in the crevices of files are pounded out by ultrasonic cleaning, which actually is cold boiling, the soil being dislodged by collapsing gas bubbles in the solution. When air bubbles form where they're not wanted, an ultrasonic whistle can be used to disperse the foam. Perhaps someday will also be used on fog and smog. This is still experimental, but watch what happens when the high frequency waves begin. Meanwhile, supermarkets already have started using ultrasonics as an aid in the packaging of perishable products. Developed by Gulton, this device is designed for use on aluminum foil envelopes like this one being filled with freshly sliced cheese. Now, the silent sound seals it shut. Extreme vibration welding the metal surfaces together. The same method permits the soldering of dissimilar metals without the use of flux or special treatment. Ultrasonic device is employed aboard the H.C. Rickard, one of the survey boats used by the Army engineers in New York Harbor to make sure channels are dredged and cleared to proper depths. The Rickard and other vessels, both large and small, long have been able to determine just how far above the bottom they're sailing at any given moment by referring to sonar equipment like this unit, which was made by the Kerfoot Company's Bloodworth Marine Division. The lines indicate the various depths as measured by the time it takes high frequency sound to travel down and echo back up to the ship. Submarines can be detected and located by the same principle, by invisible high frequency soundings in all directions. Soundings recorded on the graph give an accurate, up-to-date picture of the harbor bottom. With devices like this, the ultrasonics industry has grown from virtually nothing to become a multi-million dollar operation in less than a decade. For example, as recently as 1955, the firm of Acoustica Associates 
started almost from scratch in this boathouse at Glenwood Landing, Long Island, New York. Here, founder Robert Rod and a few associates began work with a contract for $8,000 worth of ultrasonic industrial cleaning equipment. Four years later, they were to move into this, the largest single plant in the country devoted to industrial application of ultrasonics. By then, their staff had grown to well over 400 employees, and their sales were running at $5 million a year. Among other things, the firm had become a prime contractor producing fuel gauge systems for intercontinental ballistic missiles, which also depend heavily on ultrasonics. Thus, rapid as the industry's progress has been so far, its future promises to be even more spectacular. Back at Sperry Products in Connecticut, here's another indication of Ultrasonic's firm link with America's future. Tape is applied to a nuclear fuel element plate being tested for structural quality. The tape is sometimes used as a reference for setting up a test, and the large pattern will help us see how it works. When the high frequency sound starts sweeping across the plate, looking for possible flaws in the bond that holds together the sandwich of uranium and other metals. Now they're ready to begin a high-speed inspection that will reveal inner secrets virtually impossible to determine by any other means. The scanning is at such high speed that a moving tape records the results with photographic clarity, giving us a picture in sound instead of light. Here's an application with no practical use as yet, but it may be a pump of the future. Another use for ultrasonic equipment, one of industry's endless contributions to national defense and general well-being. American industry, builder of a better tomorrow, has presented Industry on Parade, a service of the National Association of Manufacturers.